the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, that was uh, an interesting take because um, that guy was a, a he was a young guy and he had never been the star of a movie before, and they were making this movie, and because they, they you know they put money into this, the executives were giving him line readings. There was a guy who was wearing cufflinks oh, and an really? expensive watch and this really nice tailored suit, and he was saying he was telling him how to be funny. That was, was Bob like, Simons. That was probably the producer. I don't know who it Cause was. Because I worked, uh, I did a movie with him, C Spot Run. And this was after that. That's who it was. Did he Robert need line Simons. readings, or the guy no! was just being an asshole? He was just being a he fucking guy smacked. with money. He's lucky he didn't get smacked for something like that. <laughs> Certain <laughs> situations, you don't do that. Well, That's I bad. think you know, the guy wanted to do the movie. It was he was happy to be the star of the movie, and he just took it. Remember when they gave Dominic a line reading? He fl- I mean, Dominic's the most calm. Dominic Kinnacy played Uncle Junior, the most mm-hmm. calm guy, just sweetheart. And somebody gave him line readings, and he flipped out. Man. I was uh, I was in the car. We were in uh, the camera car, and I was driving on the New Jersey Turnpike. You know, they were towing the car, but the, you know the the right. camera was there, and. Uh, I was stuck. I couldn't get out. And the director came over, and Dominic was going, don't tell me how to do it. Just tell me what you want. And this is the nicest man in the history, right? And he was going, don't tell me how to do it. Just tell me what you want. What is the thing about actors with line readings? Because then you get... you're now you're not discovering it. You're not you're not creating the moment. You're just imitating it. Right. So it's not organic, and it's not might not be as interesting as what you're going to come up with as an actor. But mm. it doesn't bother it doesn't bother me so much. A lot of directors don't know how to deal with actors, so they think that that's helpful. But it's mm. it's actually the opposite. It's not helpful because when like you know, when they give you a line reading, they would actually say the line the way they yes. want. Sometimes they will. And you know what? That doesn't bother me. It bothers I mean, I, me. I, I, I flip out. It hasn't I, happened I've, much. I've gone off on directors yeah. for that. And listen, especially with I a sitcom, which I find very difficult. I find one-hour dramas, I, 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 I like that so much more. Sitcoms, a different rhythm, a different beat. I don't think I'm very good at it, and I've done quite a bit of them. Uh, you know, the guy's giving me a no to give me... I said, just tell me tell me what you want, man. How do you say it? Tell me how to say it. Right. I'll fucking do what you want. Because obviously I'm not getting what you want. I want to make the director happy. I want to do a good job. Tell me. It doesn't bother me that much, you know? I, I have had directors... Uh, I did a movie with a, a young kid. It was a really good role. A younger kid. And after every take, he came over to talk to me. Finally, I went, like, just let me... Fucking do my thing. I'll figure it out. Just yeah, stay not away. Man. Appreciative of the fact that you've got to think about what you're doing, and if you, they're yapping at you, then you're thinking about them, and it interrupts this whole process. Absolutely. You freak out though, Michael. Yeah, because as an actor, you have to. You're playing the scene, the reality of the scene, whatever it is. This guy's saying something, and it pisses you off. So right. that's what you're trying to create. That's what you're trying to do. Someone tells you, say the line like this. Well, then I'm not in the moment. I'm not dealing with this. I'm just thinking about imitating this douchebag who just told me to say something a certain way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had a director who said to me, uh, make a comical face. And I said, I don't know what that means. Do you want me to be happy? Do you want me to be ecstatic, over the top, really excited? Make a funny face. And then I said, uh, I don't know what that means. I, I think mean, he said, be more and, cartoonish. And then he said, uh, <laughs> he said, well, I'm not really good at... Uh, I swear to God, he said, I'm not really good at giving direction. I said, that's your job. That's actually the title of the job, is direction. Well, is, do you feel like as an actor, it's a, it's a strange thing to do because you're creating something, but it's also this collaborative effort. You're working with the other actors, but you're also working with the director. There's the script that you're supposed to be following, and maybe there's some changes to the script, and there's so much going on to try to create your version of it that the more that people are fucking with you the more that's gonna just throw you off the rails it does and i what i found is the best people the best director best actors and writers make it so you feel very comfortable and that you are free to create and that you're not being dominated mm. or dictated to and stuff like that like the, for instance the best example is martin scorsese who i, I only worked with once in a movie I felt like I could do no wrong. He creates that environment where you feel completely creative and free. And oh. that's, that it doesn't get better than him, you know. Doesn't get better. I would imagine that that's a, that's a real skill that you hone to be able to look at it from the the artist's perspective, from the the actor's perspective and just to to just to figure out how 
to be the least annoying, the most supportive, and then just sort of convey what you're trying to get done in the scene. A hundred percent. I mean, both ways. You know, as an actor too, you got to learn. You know, you learn how to deal with different types of directors and give give them what they want and give and satisfy yourself at the same time. When mm. you're not as skilled, when you're learning, it's harder to do that. You mm. know, I got fired from my very first professional job. I was 21. I had been studying for a long time. I've been auditioning. Never got anything. I get a play. And I was a lead in a play off Broadway, but it got a lot of attention because it was based on a true story. And uh, I got fired after the opening weekend because I didn't respect the director. I thought he, I, I didn't think he knew what he was doing. And I didn't know how to give him what he needed and still do my own thing. I wasn't skilled enough yet, so they fired me. Oof. It was devastating. But you know, first a lot job. of, but, but a lot of, like I work with Clint Eastwood a few times, and it's with the casting. He's relying on you. That's why he cast you. So a lot of, a lot of, a lot of directors, even big ones, they don't even give you any direction. Yeah. They hired and that's you. Okay. You did yeah, your I don't thing. Mind that. Yeah, absolutely. You did your thing, and now go ahead, take it away. I mean, right. you know, and, 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 and it's a lot with like he believes it's a lot with the casting. <laughs>